Hello everyone, that one bullet here. And today I'm bringing you the install guide for Awakening of the Rebellion 2.6 uh, Open Beta English Edition. Uh, many of you have asked for this video. Uh, many of you have been having trouble installing Awakening of the Rebellion um, onto your Forces of Corruption. So I'm here to run you through it and uh, sit back, relax, and uh, watch what I do. And you should be able to play Awakening of the Rebellion. So uh, the first thing that uh, we need to discuss is um, a couple of prerequisites. Now, um, first of all, head over to uh, our ModDB page for Awakening of the Rebellion. Links down in the description. Uh, you're going to want to download this um, 2.6 open beta uh, zip file. Uh, so yeah, so just click download now and it should start downloading. I've already done so. Um, so I, sh I don't need to actually download it. But what you're going to get um, is this zip file right here. Um, and the first thing you want to do is uh, probably unzip it. Um, so right click on it, extract all if you guys don't know how to unzip files. Uh, you know, extract it somewhere, wherever you want. Um, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to take a little bit to do it because it is the compressed file size is around one gigabyte so it's also going to take a while to download this mod um, it's one of the actually not not that big of a mod compared to others so anyways while this is happening um, I'm gonna go ahead and actually uh, uh, let's go here yeah uh, so this readme um, which comes with inside the zip file which I'll show you guys how to access in a second uh, it gives you the prerequisites right here um, that you're going to need before uh, you install the mod. So, okay, so the uh, installation completed, uh, I mean the extraction completed, and now we get to open this up. So here's the README that I just opened. So be sure to read this. Um, you know, I wrote this up with the intentions of people uh, reading it before they install. So please give this a read um, r before you install or right now or wherever you want. But make sure you read this. Uh, there's a, a bunch of interesting information here. Um, including how to handle uh, different mods running at the same time, which I will get into uh, in the second half of this video. Um, there's also other information about, uh, you know, credits, uh, change log, terms of use, all that stuff. So um, this is a very helpful document if you ever need it. So um, please give it a read through. Um, the first thing you want to do is make sure that your, um, your Empire at War and your forces of corruption have been patched. So what you want to do is you want to head over to these links um, or you know if you, if you already know you have these installed then you don't need to do anything but uh, if you don't know make sure you patch your game your Empire War to 1.5 and your forces of corruption to 1.1. These are essential for running any mod uh, not just ours so make sure you have it all patched. Uh, the other thing is, is if you're running uh, Windows Vista or above um, and you have more than two gigabytes of RAM uh, you want to make sure that, or I think it's actually four gigabytes. I don't know. I don't actually know what the limit is, but either way, uh, this should have already been apparent uh, because the regular forces of corruption will crash if you do not have this um, RAM fix on a newer system. So make sure you have that too. Links there. All the links are here for everything outside the mod. Now, I'm assuming that you have all this done and you have forces of corruption installed um, to either. Um, uh, on Steam as a gold pack or through the CD. Uh, I'm going to run through the CD installation first even though it's the same thing. Uh, it's just in a different place. Um, I'm going to run through the CD installation first and then I'm going to show you guys the differences between uh, Steam and retail disk. So the first thing you want to do uh, for the CD version is uh, you want to take our... first of all you want to basically uh, make sure that you have no install, uh, mods installed. So let's actually navigate to um, Forces of Corruption, uh, assuming you've put it in the default directory. You're going to want to go to My Computer, uh, see Program Files, um, x86, and you're going to scroll around and find LucasArts, uh, Forces of Corruption, and this is where your entire game is installed. Um, and you can see that the, on what I'm seeing here, I have already have a lot of stuff modified. Uh, it's a little bit more advanced. So uh, let's actually not look at that 
and uh, I've created this dummy folder here which is what your forces of corruption folder should look like if you have the CD retail version um, so there's gonna be a bunch of folders and files here but the ones we're really interested in uh, I'm gonna actually get rid of um, the ones that we don't need so that they don't clutter the screen but I just want to show you that there will be other folders uh, the ones we're interested in is data and mods um, so in your uh, this is basically where the, the two folders that are going to be modified in order uh, for your the mod to be installed. In data, uh, you can see that there's a bunch of files. Um, this is exactly what the regular base game looks like. Um, and you want to make sure that you have no mods installed. Um, let me actually open up uh, this because this is important. If you have something like Republic at War installed that modifies the data, you're going to have a folder that looks a little bit more like this. You're going to have um, scripts, custom maps, X and inside XML you're going to have all this like AI stuff. Um, the base game doesn't have any of that. So your folder should look like something like this with audio text and inside XML you should just have graphics details. That is how you know that you have a um, clean installation uh, not, not modified by any mods of forces of corruption and that's what you're going to need to do in order to install uh, Awakening of the Rebellion. Uh, if you do have other mods installed um, stick around for uh, a little bit later because I'm going to be talking about how to handle multiple mods um, with forces of corruption. Let's head on over and actually install this guy. So uh, open up that folder that you created which is right here. Um, the unzipped open beta 2.60 what you're going to want to do is basically just run the installer um, I'm not sure how this works on Windows 8 machines uh, I, I've had people say that Windows 8 machines don't exactly work with this installer but I I don't know so please let me know because I know that this installer will work on everything Windows 7 and before uh, so XP Vista all that stuff I don't know about 8.1 Windows 8.1 or 8 because I do not own uh, that version of Windows. So um, yeah, let's run through this installer. You know, you'll accept the agreement. There's stuff here uh, to read and stuff like that. Um, so now it's going to ask you where you have your uh, forces of corruption installed. So um, it tells you that this is the default location for the CD version, and then Steam is right here, um, which is basically the two differences uh, in between Steam besides one other thing. So you're going to browse. Um, it's going to load up your f stuff. You're going to want to go to local disk C, just like we talked about, program files x86. You're going to find LucasArts, Forces of Corruption, and you're going to want to install uh, in this folder right here. So you're going to want to select this folder and press OK. Now I'm not going to do that because <laughs> I already have all that stuff installed. So I'm going to actually browse to, just to show you guys, what it's going to look like. Uh, I'm going to use the dummy folder I created on the desktop, but you're going to want to use um, the folder that I just previously showed you. So let's actually, uh, yes. So this is where, let's say, where your actual save would be. I'm just putting it in the dummy folder on the desktop. So you're going to click Next. Uh, this you're going to keep the same. Uh, this will basically create a shortcut for you on your desktop for the mod. Uh, pre-done and, and ready to go. So you're going to click next and install and it's going to do its thing for a while. Now while this is installing uh, I can actually um, show you guys the differences between uh, Steam and the CD retail. Um, basically uh, you would pick the Steam retail um, installation path that's listed on the previous screens um, but in order to actually launch the mod, you'd have to um, go into your Steam account. Now I don't have I don't have Gold Edition, but I will just do um, what you'd basically want to do. You'd you'd find Empire War Gold Edition, and you'd right-click it and you'd select Properties, uh, and then you click Set Launch Options, and then you would type in um, basically down here in the README there is a number five in the instruction guide will tell you to do this. Um, you will type in this exact command into your launch options and press OK. Now I'm not going to do that because obviously I don't own the game and I don't want to mess up my Battlefront 2. Uh, so that and then basically when whenever you're going to launch off the Steam version it will launch this mod directly. Alright so the setup has uh, finished. 
Um, so basically you just want to finish it up. So now you see that there is a desktop icon um, on your desktop and uh, it's going to basically run the mod for you. Uh, everything's set up um, to make the mod run and, and so actually let's look into the Forces of Corruption dummy folder that I created. This is exactly what it will look like. Um, these are the, the places you're going to want to check to see if the mod is successfully installed. In data, inside XML, you'll see AI folder now. And uh, it'll have these four folders in it. So these are essential to making the AI work for the game. Uh, you cannot mix this with other mods, like I said before. Um, the next folder that you're going to want to check is mods. Uh, and you should see an AOTR 2.60 uh, and inside their data um, an icon image and then the readme again in case you haven't read it already for the third time. Um, so those are the changes that you're going to see. Uh, in case there's problems and you can't get this installer to install to the right position you can actually install this into an empty folder and then copy over just the AI folder into your data folder of the actual uh, install directory and then also copy the AOTR 2.60 to the actual the actual forces of corruption folder you have um, so there is a workaround in case something doesn't work right with the installer but it should considering it just installed it uh, just fine anyways I hope this installation guide um, has helped you guys I hope you guys can play uh, Awakening of the Rebellion now that uh, you understand how to install it um, stick around for the second part of the video, which I'm going to talk about uh, installing multiple mods to one copy of Forces of Corruption and how the game handles multiple mods. Okay, so the next part of this video is um, going to be talking a little bit more in depth about running multiple mods that modify the main data folder. Basically, an unmodified data, uh, you see that the folder data here is the one that the game is actually going to work. I have multiple datas installed here. Um, the game will not read any of these. The, the game doesn't care uh, if something inside here is named data original, data raw. It will not use this stuff. So what I've basically set up is originally I have copied the original data file before I in installed any mods and I have basically created duplicates. And I've named the original data file data original so that it will not use this. And there would be a second data that would be the exact clone of this. On top of that, I would then install a mod into, it will look, the, the installer will look for the normal data folder. And so it will install your mod, as you see here, I have, um, I have Awakening of the Rebellion installed in this data folder. So it will basically write over your, the data folder you currently have and install the mod. That's the same thing that Republic at War will do. You see that I have a data raw here. And basically... Uh, if you want to play different mods, what you'd basically do is just keep creating copies of the original data folder and then install mods to this um, newly created copy. And then what you can basically do is if I want to play RAW right now, or if I want to play the original game, let's say, and right now what I have is AOTR. What I would do is, is I'd rename AOTR, the data folder to data AOTR, make, make sure it renames. Now you need to have at least one data folder in here that's named just data. Otherwise, the game will crash on load. So basically, if I want to play the original game, just take the original, I know this is the original, and just rename it back to data. And now you can play any mod that doesn't uh, modify the base game folder. So, for example, mods like uh, Alliance, um, Imperial Civil War, otherwise known as Thrawn's Revenge, Rise of the Mandalorians. I have all these mods installed, and they need a clean data folder from the original game in order to run. Now let's say I want to run Republic at War. Rename it back. Original. And now let's rename data raw back to data. And now we basically can use um, the Republic at War data files um, when we run Republic at War and there will be no issues whatsoever. Um, so basically this is how I am able to swap out mods um, that require use of the or require modification of the data folder. Um, and that is how I'm able to do two Let's Plays on one installed copy of Forces of Corruption. All right, uh, if you've watched up to this point, uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, I hope you know a little bit more about um, 
the forces of corruption and the way mods work in it. And hopefully this will help you uh, to be a little bit more knowledgeable about the game and um, cause less errors down the road. Um, so once again, thank you for watching and have a nice day. Bye.